quick video. I was getting these uh, limit switches set up on my little uh, milling machine here. And I had a bunch of these guys that were active. Um, well, one. One was staying active. And I tried replacing the limit switch and that didn't fix the problem. Um, of course, before I disconnected it, um, this is like a C10 breakout board. And there's three sets of inputs down here. Well, the one in the middle, which is pin 13, which was the one for my Y, um, I was getting a signal saying, after I'd go to reference all home on the program run screen of Mach 3, down here I would get a message saying, uh, something about home switch uh, active please fix and return or something so there's basically a message down here saying that one of these switches was already active or the circuit was already active so that was giving me problems and uh, I couldn't figure it out and then I decided to just start replacing some of the chips on this board and sure enough um, so I've got a pack of these little uh, circuit boards and this one right here that little guy right there was a problem. I replaced that and it fixed it. And so now I can reference them all home and uh, everything's working. So quick example, I'm going to uh, go to zero really quick. Okay, and then I can click my reference all home. Then each axis does its thing and it's functioning, which is cool because I think this is going to really help me uh, start getting all my offsets dialed in and all that. So anyway, that was a quick problem. I don't know if um, you know you guys might be using a similar board, but I would get some extra chips for that thing because um, I don't know. I've replaced a few now. I was having issues with my motors just quitting and. I think there's something to do with like the power um, must be dirty or something because uh, I've blown a few I found that as long as you turn on the computer first and have that booted um, then you um, turn on the um, the power supply and drivers and all that it doesn't happen to blow any chips but um, other than that I, I have been and it's getting old so I've gone through about five of them and I actually haven't even machined a single part yet. So anyway, just thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, hopefully that's useful. Um, and again, I, if you go to diagnostics here, you should only have like maybe one of these lights on. And this one light that I have is actually for the tool probe. So that's uh, what that one is for. So um, that tool probe is hooked up here on that pin this is red wire and then the other one's going to the ground on the output up there so um, then it just goes to a little audio jack now uh, if you close the circuit that light goes off so I'll show you there we go it's off on off on and uh, so that's the only one that I've got on and that's because it's a normally um, I guess a, maybe a normally closed circuit and then when you hit it it shuts it off or something but um, if you've if you're having errors and you see a bunch of LEDs illuminated here there's a good chance that you've got some something uh, maybe shorted that you shouldn't have or something but anyway I'm not a pro at this but I thought I'd just share that because I, I was having consistent issues and this screen kind of helps under your uh, We'll go to one more thing. Under config, you go to ports and pins here. If you're wondering if you want to set up your limit switches, it's pretty simple. You just go to input signals. Um, basically, input is just something that's telling the breakout board something. And um, you can look at, if you want to do a home switch for X, you can enable that. And then select what um, pin number you're going to use. And in this case, on on this um, C10 board, I'll show you, it has 
numbers next to the inputs. So it tells you what pin of the serial port it's going to be active on. Um, so Y is on 13, X is on 15, and then Z is on uh, pin 12. So if you go down to the breakout board down here, you probably can't see very well. You can see the three and a little bit of the one there on, on this guy right here. So you can see 13 and then you can see 15 over there on the right and then this is 12 over here on the left. So <laughs> sorry it's crappy visual but if you have one of these boards and you don't have wires hooked up it's going to be easy to see. So it's 12, 13 and 15 over there and that's it. So then you just need two wires hooked up to your limit switches whatever type of switches you have um, these switches are cool they're only about 10 or 12 bucks on uh, Amazon and they're pretty much uh, coolant proof and they're easy to put on there you have to figure out your own brackets of course the mounting them is the biggest pain um, the wiring is very simple so that's that but anyway, hopefully these little tidbits are helpful for some of you guys that aren't that good with this stuff. Now I'm going to start making a part I've been trying to make for like four months. And uh, so I'm going to give this a shot in some Nylatron. I'll take a peek. There's the, uh, the part there. Turned out pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Finally making some chips. Well, that concludes this video. Hopefully you guys uh, like the content. And hopefully uh, if you've got any questions, you feel free to comment below because I'd be happy to make a video on something you're confused about. Um, all this is pretty uh, confusing to me, and it's taken me forever to get to where I'm at. So I'm happy to help. If you've got a question, please feel free to comment below. I'll do my best to explain it. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to find it.